Hello everyone. Today's video will cover weathering. So there are many different ways that you can weather your helmet. Um, there are more expensive ways, there are cheaper ways. Um, you can buy yourself a $150 airbrush and some expensive airbrush paints. Um, that works great. If you have the means to obtain one of those, please get one. Um, I've seen some pretty great results. Um, today's video and um, today's tutorial will be more so for those that do not have an airbrush or other means to weather their helmet. Today's video will cover how to get a weathered look. So by weathered, I mean dirty, grimy, um, just the finished look um, from a clean, freshly painted bucket. And we will be doing so with cheap acrylic paint, water, some old brushes that you don't care about, and some paper towels. That's all you need. So if you don't have the, the means to get an airbrush, this is a great way to weather your helmet, um, very cheap way to get that finished look. Um, and once again, as with all parts of this hobby, feel free to experiment, try new things, see what works best for you. Uh, this video is purely to show you guys a simple and easy way and cost-effective way to weather your helmets. Awesome, so here we go. We're trying to get more weathered look on our 212 helmet. I'll show you guys how to do that. So um, to start, I like to begin with a more broad, just covering more of the helmet um, strokes, um, just to get that, that base cover, that base grime all over the helmet. Um, and I'm gonna do so um, as follows. So I have my water, um, gonna get a little bit of the water out. Um, I like to use two paper towels for this. Um, a wet paper towel, which of course I'm gonna need anyway because when I dip my brush in water, I have to dry it out a bit. Um, so naturally it's just gonna get wet. This will work as my eraser. If I do something that I don't like, I can just wipe it off and it's gonna take 90, 95% of what I just did off of the helmet. Um, I also work with a drier paper towel. This one's starting to get a little wet, so I have an extra one back here. Um, but I'm gonna be using mostly this to get those, those smears and, and smudges and stuff. So with these helmets, I'm not doing as heavy of uh, a weathering job. I'm gonna do a little bit lighter of weathering. So um, when using the acrylic paint, if I don't want it as dark from, from the weathering, from the acrylic paint, I'm gonna use more water. More water will be a lighter coat, lighter weathering, less water, so just the paint itself will result in a darker finish. So I have my brush wet, gonna dip it in the acrylic paint, and I'm just gonna spread it over the helmet. And after I have that, to put the brush aside, I grab my dry paper towel, and I'm gonna start just lightly wiping it in every which way, um, ever so lightly. Some of them can be a little bit harder, um, but this is how I'm gonna get the base weathered look. So as you can see, it's already starting to come together. Um, I'm gonna kind of do this a little bit more later down the line, but in the divots and low places, I'm gonna want to leave a little bit more because naturally when something's grimy and filthy, uh, dirt and other things will get stuck in the low parts of a helmet. So keep that in mind, I'm gonna be making sure to add a little bit more acrylic paint in places like these and I'll kind of dab it in. Once again, use an older brush you don't care about because this technique does destroy the brush. But destroy a $2 brush, $1 brush, or pay $150 for an airbrush, um, up to you. But um, once again, I don't recommend using a brush that you care about and use for painting and whatnot. 
So once again, we're gonna keep going along the helmet. I wanna kind of blend it. I don't want lines and stuff like this. A little bit more water, get that out, paint. And I'm just going to go over the helmet. Just thin layer. And I don't want this to sit acrylic paint, even though it is diluted with water. Will still dry eventually and actually rather quickly compared to other paints. So um, I do want to make sure I'm wiping. And once again, going in different directions, trying to take away those brush marks and create new smears and smudges with the direction of my wipe. So every which way, um, make sure I'm not leaving any other marks that I don't want. Um, in these low recesses where I can't really go in multiple directions, sometimes I'll just dab and that will do the trick. Um, and once again, if you do something that you don't like, um, say it's too dark for your liking, uh, say back here, like say this already dries or it's close to drying, I can take my wet paper towel and just use it as an eraser to kind of take it off. Or I can use it to kind of blend what I already have. I guess there's black paint on that. And get rid of the things I don't want to. So that's why I use two. I use a wet and a dry. Wet's my eraser. Dry is how I create all the marks and whatnot. So um, for this helmet specifically, uh, there are multiple ways to do this. Sometimes I've, I've masked this off, I've taped this and I've spray painted this part just dark gray and it's looked great. Um, upon looking closer at the animated Clone Wars um, art style, it doesn't look like a solid gray. It looks like the same white helmet, but um, just a little bit dirtier. So I don't want a solid coat in here, but I do want it a lot darker than the rest of the helmet because that's what it looks like in the show. So there's things like that. I'll get more paint and once again, I want less water, more paint, and I'm just going to go and put it in there. And I like to dab it because it already starts adding like the texture and inconsistency that you see um, when you're nearing your finished product. Um, and as long as I don't have too many gnarly um, brush marks or whatnot. Once again, less water, more paint if you want it darker. Um, because I want it to, to finish a little bit darker, I am actually not going to brush this right away. I'm going to let it dry a little bit before. But I'm going to do one just run through there we go and it's not even dry yet, but it already looks pretty good. Of course, sometimes it'll come up here and I'll want to kind of smear that um, just to blend it with the helmet. But yeah, um, for lower recesses and for this part in particular, I like to do just a darker um, bit of weathering. Um, but like I said, there are tons of different interpretations of how it should look. Um, with these helmets in particular, you are trying to replicate a drawing. So it's not like you have the old Empire Strike, Strikes Back prop that you can base it off of and whatnot. This is just kind of off of your own preference. And that's the beauty of weathering because um, you get to decide how it looks, how much it's weathered and whatnot, and you get to make it its own unique thing. So once again, that's 
why I love weathering is because you gotta take something that's kind of just clean and white and not a lot is happening to it. And you gotta give it a story. You gotta make it look like it's been through a battle. You can add blast marks with acrylic paint. You can add, um, if you wanna be crazy, you could take a soldering iron and weld some holes into the um, to the bucket to show just blast marks or maybe a saber strike or something like that. Um, you can do whatever you want. Have fun with it. Um, there is no one correct way that a helmet needs to be weathered. That's the beauty of this hobby. This is how you get to be creative and express yourself. Um, you get to do whatever you want to the helmet and make it the way you want it to look. So, uh, yeah, once again, that's why it's my favorite part. Um, you gotta be creative, you gotta add your own personal touch. So, um, that's more or less it. Um, I'll show you guys a little bit more of like the cheek spot or the lower parts and what I do there. Um, let me just kind of blend this a little bit better. I'll go back and, and touch it up, but basically it's just the whole point of showing you guys this is this is the general um, way to apply the base coat of weathering um, using a paper towel and going in different directions. Um, and I just, I'll do that over the entirety of the helmet. Um, so yeah, so dome's getting there. A little spot right there. Try and take that away, blend it a little bit better. So, I do want this. Yep, so um, once again, in the lower parts, as you go through and do the base coat, it'll naturally just accumulate more because it's a lot harder to wipe. But in places like the cheekbone um, or in other places where it doesn't accumulate as much, I'll take um, just the acrylic and I'll kind of dab it into the corner, just into the recess. Um, where I want it a little bit more filthy, a little bit more grimy. So I'll just dab it in there with the brush. Once again, this is bad for the brush. Use an old brush. Um, and instead of wiping, since I can't wipe, I'll kind of dab, like a mixture of, of dabs and wipes, kind of dry it out and give that more dirty accumulated look in those recesses. Yeah, um, practice blending. Um, use a painted piece of plastic if you want, but uh, just have fun with it. Practice a bit of it. Um, work on blending and, and working on those recesses and whatnot. Um, weathering's a lot of fun, um, and that's essentially what you're going to do to the entire helmet. So here's a closer look at what you guys just saw me do. Um, once again, you have the clean look and we're going for the dirty finish. It just, it looks a lot better. Um, you can see how I tried to get it to blend across. There's some spots like right here that I am gonna touch up a little bit, but uh, and then the, the recess right here, you can still see the brush mark. So I'm gonna go over that with more brushes, more uh, wet acrylic and go over that. But low spots, want more to stick and I still have the rest of the helmet to do. But that's just a closer look at um, what I was doing just now. Um, and that's how we weather the helmet so you can get it to look like a finished product. So. Um, yeah, 
that's what I'm going to be doing to the rest of this helmet and also to the 332nd. Um, and then just finishing the little aerator pieces, um, painting the rest of the mouthpiece, the ear pieces, all of that. Um, and once again, after I finish doing all of this and have it weathered to my liking after I do all the touch-ups and whatnot, um, then I will cover all three helmets with a clear coat, which will protect all the weathering. I won't have to worry about it um, getting washed off and whatnot. And only after that will I apply the visor, um, which will be the finishing touch. And I guess for those um, that need it, um, padding can also be applied. Um, my head is um, quite large, so if I were to add padding, my head would not fit in the helmet anymore. So um, for some helmets like these, I don't, I personally don't add padding, but um, you can based on your head size and um, how you want the helmet to fit. But yeah, that's more or less how you weather helmets, the cheap and easy way using paper towels, old brushes, acrylic paints, and water. So uh, thanks for watching this video, guys. Hope you guys were able to learn a little bit. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, if you like content like this, please like and subscribe. And I'll be trying to get out more videos on smoothing, on masking, taping, all that stuff. Um, so I can show you guys how I do everything I do. Um, it's a lot of fun. It's a great hobby. Highly recommend it. If you're a Star Wars fan like me, um, it's the most satisfying thing in the world to make your own clone trooper helmet or stormtrooper helmet or whatever helmet you like. So um, thanks guys for, for watching and hope you have a good day.